Jensen Karp has been doing his Earwolf podcast, Get Up On This, for over 300 episodes. And to celebrate, Jensen is sitting down with hip-hop legend Method Man to discuss Method Man's music career, television appearances from The Wire to The Deuce, and the debut of Drop the Mic, a show that Jensen created and is co-executive producing on TBS. You won't want to miss this engaging, candid conversation with one of the best rappers in the game. So check out Jensen's conversation with Method Man on Get Up On This, available on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or Earwolf.com. And check out Jensen's new TV show, Drop the Mic, October 24th on TBS. What did I miss? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh. Oh. Guys, I'm sorry. I was late getting here. I got here to the intro as soon as I possibly could. It's a sin to be late, ladies and gentlemen, because you're wasting other people's time. And you will go to hell. <laughs> Where does etiquette come from? It comes from God. In the book of Veronica, it says, on time is late and yay, 10 minutes early is on time. Thus spake Zarathustra when he talked to the goblinites and, <laughs> and told them, the Lord your God, he's a real stickler about time. Oh, he hates ye. <laughs> so much of the Bible's lessons still apply today. If you're going to get in a fight with a giant, you better win. I think about that every day. That's why I always carry a big rock. Hasn't happened yet, but I'll be ready when it does. Because you know what they say? It takes a little guy with a rock to stop a big guy with whatever he had. I don't know a lot about Goliath. Did he carry around like a tree that he made into a bat or something? Am I, am I conflating him with Paul Bunyan? <gasps> Were they related? <laughs> Do you think Paul Bunyan could trace his lineage back to Goliath? And he's like, I renounce that aspect of my family. It's like the descendants of Robert E. Lee saying, uh, yeah, we, uh, we don't think he was so great. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to have a free form conversation with me inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest, then... I invite some improviser pals onto the program to join me in a narrative improv. That is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes, oftentimes utilizing details that we have gleaned from my conversation with the aforementioned special guest. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. Ooh, free applause for Ed. This has never happened before. <laughs> Sometimes at the end, never at the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, this very polite and enthusiastic person who's here today. Maybe you'll recognize her from playing the role of Marisol on Devious Maids. Please welcome to the program, Ana Ortiz. What's up, what, gente? What's up? Como estas? Uh, I'm good. <laughs> How are you? I'm so good. This is like when Chewbacca and Han Solo talk. It is. <laughs> That's exactly they each speak their saying. own language, but they understand, they understand each it other. Perfectly. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Why weren't there any scenes where they tried to talk each other's language? 
<laughs> just like it could have been just the beginning of another scene where it's like Luke Skywalker walks in and they're trying to <laughs> teach each other. I don't other. think Harrison Ford would have been game. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy. You don't think you think he would have been the one to say no and not Chewbacca? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I have a dog mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Anna, thank you for being here. Thank you. For it is a pleasure me. to have you. I have a mm -hmm. question for you. This is from our previous episode's okay. guest. That question is, at what moment have you felt the most adult? Oh. I would have to say, we were talking about kids. So, I mean, I definitely, I think when I brought my daughter home out of, from the hospital, putting her in the car, sort of taking her back to the apartment in Brooklyn, that was when I was, and then I was left alone with just this newborn baby. <laughs> right. And so I think that was when it finally kicked in. Is it sad that I didn't feel most adult until I was 38 I years don't, old? I don't think so. I think it's, I think it's very much an ongoing process. And I think yeah. you unfortunately dip in and out <laughs> yes. where sometimes you realize, oh, I'm a grown up and I shouldn't care about this anymore. <laughs> Although I do remember like it runs a, I think right after college, and I was expecting something great to happen. I was expecting to just, like, graduate and become a television star. <laughs> and, um, and I realized that point, after just getting kicked in the teeth for, you know, six months auditioning, just, oh, this is always going to be hard, and it's always going to suck, and life is always going to be hard with, like, moments of happiness. Mm -hmm. But mostly grueling, slogging, tough, hard <laughs> Life. Wow, and how old were you? <laughs> 23. Man, oh man. Again, probably a little late to realize no, that. No, I, I think it's early. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it took me, but it's also that thing of you sort of, when you're younger, you sort of just go on. Right, because you do it you anyway. Don't, you don't know any better. Right. You know what I mean? You don't. You have so few experiences, and the more autonomy you gain, um, the less you think about how life is going to be because you're so concerned with how life is right now. Right now. And there's so many great things where it's like, oh, no one's around to tell me not to do this. I'm going to do it, you know. That's true. Yeah, and it, that takes you years to regret. <laughs> <laughs> where you're like, oh, I wish, I wish that someone had told me to stop doing those things. Yeah, and luckily, <laughs> even though I knew it was going to be super hard and awful, I, I was... I am, I think, a pretty much a hopeful, optimistic person. Mm -hmm. So even when it's really grim and dark, I can still sort of figure out that there's there's something good is going to happen. I right. just know it if I keep plugging away. <laughs> well, I think the secret really is to know when you're when you're at your lowest that it's a it's a um it's a finite amount of time. Yeah. And that it's, there's up and downs and that it's like, this is terrible right now, but eventually things go better. But sometimes it's very hard to keep that in mind. <laughs> it is. It is very hard. And I was in Philly. I was at school in Philadelphia. Uh -huh. So, um, in fact, I had a friend who worked at Hats in the Belfry. No! I swear. My friend Les worked at Hats in the Belfry for like, Three or four years this, to work there. I'm sure this is after my time. <laughs> I don't know. Like, maybe. He's, he's my age. He's Late 45. 80s? Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. No, 90s. 90s, 90s. Because I was in college. Yeah. So that's when he worked there. By the 90s, I was into grunge, <laughs> and I wouldn't have worked at a hat store. There were very few grunge hats. <laughs> well, we used to love and go in there and try and all the <laughs> Of course. Of course. <laughs> and torture him. <laughs> Where did you live in Philadelphia? I lived on Spruce. I live in Center City. Mm -hmm. um, I lived on Spruce Street at one point. I lived on Pine Street, um, right where all those hookers were. The male, the dude, the little boy hookers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> they broke into my apartment like three times. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> one time I was like, I'm pretty sure that's my fucking blanket that you took off no, of my bed. No, you would see the stuff out in the world. <laughs> yeah, these guys didn't care at all. They clipped their nails in my sink. It was gnarly. They broke into your apartment <laughs> and clipped their nails. It was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. I mean, there's, it is disgusting. <laughs> but my God, that's a level of comfort as a criminal right? that I don't think I could ever achieve. They were cracked out beyond <laughs> because they would then, but I would see them on the street and they'd be like, hey, girl. I'd be like, you fucking hell, you stole all my CDs. Oh my God. <laughs> Three times. Maybe it was twice, but yeah, twice or three times, yeah. On Spruce Street, Spruce and, I want to say 16th, but that, is that right? That sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I went to the University of Arts right there in Center City. Right. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. I went, I went briefly to Temple. 
Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, I did not. Uh, I did not graduate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I well, was there for a little bit. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's all right. <laughs> um, the, when you when you moved around, how many? So you lived in a few different places in yeah. Philadelphia. Um, what was the worst place you lived? Has to be the one on Spruce where right. I kept getting broken into. I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and um, did you live there alone? Did you have roommates? I had a roommate, Jill. She's still a dear friend of mine, mm-hmm. and. Um, we had room, and we what well, it was an acting class. It was an acting school, and so I what the sophomore year was um, method, and my scene partner also happened to be my boyfriend at the time. Oh boy! <laughs> and we were doing some, you know, you're fucking nineteen, so you think everything's super dramatic, and we were doing something from. It was some like abuse scene, right? Where he like beats me up, like the burning bed or something horrible. <laughs> right. And um, and so his method, and we had just gotten broken into, and like a week prior, and all of a sudden we're watching TV, my roommate and I, and I hear like we had a fire escape. That's how they kept getting in. And they, we hear scraping on the window, and we look, and there's nobody there. And then we hear scraping on the window, and we look, and there's nobody there. And then he pops his head up, and he's wearing a ski mask, and I freak out, and I think it's, I don't think it's him right away. Of course not. And then I freak out, and I'm like, call the cops, they're here again. And we call the fucking cops, and as soon as I'm talking to the cops, I realize, oh, that must have been my boyfriend being an asshole. <laughs> and so then- Well, being an artist. Well, sure. <laughs> sure, that's what he said. <laughs> um, but I called them anyway, and I was like, come and get Wait, this motherfucker. did you call them after you realized it was yes. him? Yes. <laughs> If we're doing method, let's do that, method. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. You want to do it? Let's do it. Um, <laughs> needless to say, like, he didn't get caught. Thank God, I guess. But, yeah. That's Did a- he realize you were calling the cops? I don't know. So he, he appears in the window, and then what he, like, after he gets and the reaction, he runs away? And then he starts screaming, yeah, and then he runs. And he was like, but I just wanted, you know, because the teacher, our professor, was like, you're not getting that first moment. Like, she just doesn't believe you, that you're really fucking scared. This is, this is what we had to pay for this, y'all. Um, <laughs> now I have to ask. Yeah. Did it help? <laughs> Can you believe I actually have to think about it? Um... You know what helped? I was so pissed that I was able to like turn that into fear. Yeah. I guess what they thought of. I mean, I got an A in the scene, you guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, it worked, I guess. How long were you and this boyfriend together? Forever, like four <laughs> years. Four wow! Years. So for the for the entirety of your college. So experience? for sophomore through, and then a year after college. Okay. Yeah, and then we were. It was still. It was all good, but it was uh, one of those things. Like, well, you either have to get married or just move on because right. boring. And um, not you know what I mean. It was like, what yeah. else are we gonna do? Because <laughs> you're like in your early twenties at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And neither one of us wanted to get married, and you know we were young and cute. Trying to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> so you both had the realization it would be unwise to lock this Let's up at this point. Let's sow some oats. Absolutely. Let's, you know what I mean? Have a little fun. <laughs> I'm fucking New York in the 90s. At that point, did you envision yourself being a mom? I always envisioned myself always. being a mom. Okay. Always, always. But I always thought I would be a young mom. Um, but then... Then I was young and I didn't want kids. <laughs> like right. I didn't want them in my twenties because that's not my jam. But um, <laughs> but then I got I waited so long, to be, you know, because I just kept meeting like asshole after asshole. <laughs> well, and dating them and like having relationships with them. So, so who's more than the just asshole? meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but after my second restraining order, I figured, all right, maybe this isn't the right avenue. <laughs> And I met a fabulous Angelino, who I married, and he's great. <laughs> <laughs> New York guys are not safe. <laughs> not safe. So wait, it was all New York guys up until that point. Um, yeah, I dated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, there was there was a guy I dated out here. Ugh, awful, awful. But he was from New York. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you, so you were drawn to a type. I guess I was. Yeah, yeah sort of that. I hate to say it, kind of thuggy. Mm-hmm. That was my jam. Sure, <laughs> I liked it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it just because it? Did you like the? Was it? Was it in your mind? The 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 
it was like ro romantic? Like it was the drama of it or the... I think the drama of it, most of them had cars, <laughs> which in <laughs> New York, you know, is not like, nobody has a car in New York. Right. Um, and it was, it was, they're just... It's that bravado. It's mm -hmm. that, you know, like if they take you somewhere like this is my girl and you know what I mean? If somebody looks at you, they're going to be like, yo, stop looking at my girl. You don't know. Right. And you think well, that, that was like, like your idea of what a man was supposed to be. I mean, not. it's just what I wanted to date at that right. moment. I All knew. Right. I mean, my dad's awesome. And like, I knew what a really good guy was like. <laughs> right. It just wasn't. That wasn't what I wanted to do. <laughs> Were there moments with any of those guys where they'd be. You know, the, doing that, uh, uh, you know, marking their territory thing yeah. in public where you were not into it, where you're yeah. like, I wish this would stop. Yes, definitely. <laughs> like when it would start to get like ill or like if there was started to get like, you know, chest, like all just blown up or when it involved like uh, the, the, they weren't very, they were not very faithful. Right. So it, even like the more so than like the confrontation thing, I really just hated being in a room and he would be like. Oh, you know, like talking to some girl or whatever. Oh, God, I immediately get New York when I start. Uh, <laughs> I, I like all of a sudden I'm talking like this. <laughs> but, you know, he, you know, if they like look at another right. uh, girl <laughs> and, you know, then I have to be the one who's like, yo, why are you looking at that? And then I start a fight and then I'm the fucking asshole. Right. And then I get us thrown out of the bar. <laughs> Were you thrown out of places? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would happen? What would happen? <laughs> I mean, ugh, God, I, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a nice person, but I, you know, like, I'm just, I sound awful when I'm saying no, it's so out know. of context. Well, no, no, no. I'll just, you know, I would get like, for me, if I was drinking tequila, it's either like a really good time or jail. Like it's not, <laughs> there's sort of no in between. And then that's that, like that little thing of, <clears throat> I would just, like a guy was sitting in my chair. I put my napkin over my drink where my seat was. Somebody's sitting here. Somebody's sitting Everyone here. And I went outside. Yes. I come back in and some dude's sitting in my chair. I said, excuse me, that's my chair. And he pops off immediately like, that's not your, how's this your fucking chair? I was like, it's my fucking chair because that's my, I'm sorry I'm cussing so much. That's fine. That's my glass. So you see it right there. It's mine. And then he swings around. <clears throat> He swings around. I don't think he was trying to hit me, but like his arm came up like that. And then I lose my brain because I think he's trying to hit me. And I'm like, girl, I'm like, I'm a girl. You're not a girl. You're not a man. It's a girl. And then, you know, and then we both get thrown out. <laughs> What's that moment like when you're both out there on the street? <laughs> Believe it or not, I that was I worked there. That was my day off. Oh, oh. So like the bouncer was just like. You can't <laughs> do this here. Like this is you can't drink here anymore. You can't come and drink here anymore. So like he oh. was yelling and the bouncer was like, "You need to leave her alone and get the fuck out of here." And not yelling at me cuz I was just right. like, "Tell him, you know I'm a fucking, you know, tell him I'm a whatever it is." And then and then they throw him out and they're like, "Girl, you have to go home." Like, go home. <laughs> it's not it's awful. <laughs> Have you been back to any of those places since, you know, uh, all that time has passed? I have. Just Are they still there? Are they well, High Life is there. This is in New York. The place I got thrown out of <laughs> that one with the chair was El Carmen, which is here on 3rd. Yeah. Yeah. So I was working there. Um, and I just went back there, but it's totally different. <laughs> um, that's why I was drinking tequila, though, because it's a sure. tequila bar. <laughs> I don't drink to kill anymore, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good scene. Understood. Yeah. Well, Ana Ortiz, thank you so much for being I'm here. I'm sorry. I sound like a degenerate. No, you don't. I'm a mother of two and a happily married woman <laughs> with a very successful career and parents who love me and siblings. And I have a college education. I swear. Fully insured. I have health insurance, life insurance. I'm a very responsible human being. No one doubts that for a second. It's all the more impressive because <laughs> of these stories. On Ortiz, where can people find you online should they wish to find you and should you wish to be found? Um, I met the real Anna Ortiz on both Twitter and Instagram. Don't be fooled, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and is there anything that you would like to tell people about? Anything you like um, to promote? I'm working on the Mindy Project right now, which is go. so much, so much, so much fun. Fantastic. Yeah.
All right. Thank you so much for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a break. During the break, you will listen to the ad. Then when we come back, we're going to meet our improvisers. Spontonians, don't forget Sunday, October 29th, Halloween Eve. Plan 9 from Outer Space, a live reading of the Ed Wood disaster piece happening at Largo at the Coronet in West Hollywood, Sunday, September 29th, presented by Dana Gould, all-star cast including me, little Janet Varney, and live theremin music by our own Eben Schletter. Come on, you got to come to see this Sunday, October 29th, Largo at the Coronet, Plan 9 Live. Tickets are available at pauleftompkins.com slash live. I love you. Oh, welcome back to everyone who went away and then returned. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to meet our friends from the land of make pretense. Seated right kitty corner from me. Meow. You su surprised I surpri me. I, I try to mix it up. I try to mix it up. Please welcome back our friend, Carla Kakowski. Hi, Paul. Carla, how are you? I'm so good. Thank you for having me again. Of course. This it's lovely to exciting. see you. It's my pleasure to have you again. We just saw each other in Detroit, Michigan. Yep. We were there for the Detroit Improv Festival. We were. It was super fun. We did not get to play together this time. We did not. But we did last time. We and did. What a time we had. We did. It was we positive good and good. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that's a that's a really positive festival. You guys giving it a shout out. A lot of positive vibes. Yeah. A lot of positive vibes. Yeah. Carla. Yes. Have you ever been thrown out of a place? I have. <laughs> ah, yeah. This is good. Uh, so you were saying tequila is bad for you. See. I have learned that bourbon is not my friend. Really? I become a very evil person. Evil? <laughs> evil starting fights in bars with the bouncer, apparently. Over uh, what? Is it I hazy? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, but I was kicked out and my friends took me to the hospital because I was blacking out. Oh, what you were blacking out? Yeah. So you would say, "I like." Hey, how did I get here? And yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This was still in the midst of a drinking session. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. But I was 21, so I'm so much older now, and I've learned my lesson. And I also have health insurance. Okay, I don't okay. have kids, uh, but I'm married. From, from from here on out, let's establish that everyone here has insurance. Yes. They've all got their. Yeah, we're, we're adults. We're responsible acting. adults. Yes, everyone's okay. fine uh, Here's the hilarious thing, though. That hospital bill I never paid because I was mad because I was like, I was blackout drunk. Why should I have to pay for this hospital bill? I didn't choose to go to the hospital, but I was 21. Okay, so this was immature. <laughs> the logic almost Never works. paid for it. Never got the bills over the years, and then it just stopped happening. Two weeks ago, I went in for some tests at a hospital, and they found my old account from that night and they were like is your was your maiden name snowden and i was like yeah and then they gave me my address from when i was 21 and they were like oh you were here 16 years ago and i was like no i don't remember that at all i don't know what you're talking about and then they told me it was from that night isn't that crazy wow how much was the bill they, i was like do you do you know how much and they're like no I, we don't have that information i was like oh good maybe the like the time has lapsed or something because I wouldn't like pay it now either. <laughs> the statute of limitations. Yes. It's like five years or something, right? Like they can't go after you for a medical bill. I have like no after idea. Five years. I have no idea either. I pay my medical bills. I I'm know. an adult. I have health insurance. I know. But isn't that crazy? Like that I'm now 37 and this kind of pops up. And then when you said that story, I was like, oh my God, that just happened to me where they for the listener, connected Carla, the dots. Yes. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> No, this We've is been just looking sorry. at each other a lot this whole time. A lot of eye contact. A lot in. of eye contact. <laughs> sorry. So have you had? Uh, have you drunk bourbon since then? Not, not once. <laughs> not at all. Never since that night, sixteen years ago. I had this. I had a similar problem, although I never got kicked out because of it. But with tequila, where it would make me mean. It would okay. make me very sarcastic. And after it happened a couple times, I realized that's what the common denominator was. Mm -hmm. And so I don't drink tequila. Did you lose friends? No, it never got to that point. I lost all those friends from that night. Did you? From that night? What? <laughs> from that night, people were like, we're done with her. They, yeah, they did we not. Care, like, we care enough to get her to the hospital, yes. but that's it. They wrote me a letter and said they didn't want to be my friend anymore. Are you kidding me? And then, and then eight years later, I ran into one of the guys and he hit on me. 
what is going on in LA Carla, in 21? I, I, I don't want know, to, you guys. I would like to pursue this, but it would be okay, unfair yeah, to course, the other people. Sorry. <laughs> this is but the most I, I've ever spoken on this podcast. <laughs> I think that's true. I think that's true. Sorry. All right, Carla, I'm going to look next to you, right across from me. Look at this guy. How much do I adore him? His name is Eugene Cordero. Yo, sagph.org. <laughs> that's where I pay my medical dues, son. <laughs> Sag, pension and health.org. That's right. That's right. Uh, a lot of emails from the SAG organization yeah. about all sorts of things. Hey, they got to make sure that, uh, you know, you're uh, well aware of everything that's helping help helping you that's if right. you are ever in trouble. That's right. <laughs> SAG is there for you. They're there for you. Eugene. Hi. Have you ever been kicked out of a place? I, sure. I can't remember. More I than re- once? I remember being outside of places that I was inside <laughs> of. <laughs> And not, <laughs> and not sure why I'm outside of the place. And I'm with a bunch of friends who are also angry. <laughs> so then we're walking to another place and they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, why, why, what happened? <laughs> As my friend comedian Graham Clark says, footage missing. <laughs> yes. So that's happened. I've also kicked people out of bars before. I used to manage a bar in New York. What was the bar? American Spirits. So it was on the Upper East Side. Oh, what a terrible name. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I like waved the no, flag no. around. I d- <laughs> <laughs> and so you would have to, uh, you were, but you were not the bouncer. You were the no, manager. I was the manager. Was there also a bouncer? So there was a bouncer too, but it would be me that would walk up and then the bouncer's behind you so you could do it calmly. Sure. And then if things got escalated, then... They would jump in there. So you, so, okay, I'm a troublemaker. Yeah. I'm causing some problems. So, yeah. So, <laughs> and it would usually be like pool table related because there's always pool table trouble. Right. I, here's what I'm doing. I'm mad at how the pool game is going. Yes. So I'm pouring beer into all the pockets. Right, right. <laughs> and I'll be like, my man, my man. What? You can't, you can't do that. I anymore. paid for this beer. I can do whatever I want with it. You've paid for that beer, but that beer's done. So you're going to have to go. There's still a little bit left. So I'm going to pour in the corner pocket. Okay, go ahead and do it because you've already ruined it. But then you gotta you had to head, head, head out of here. Just to be clear, I can pour the rest yeah, of this yeah. beer. Just do it. Just do it, and then go. That was the kind of manager I was. Where they're like, so the owners come back and go like, there was a lot of damage. I was like, oh, I let them finish. I let them completely destroy what they were planning on destroying. But then they left. There was one pool table discussion where I did step back so the bouncer would go, and that's when he would. The guy was talking to me, and he took the pool cue and broke it over his own head. And I went, whoops. And I go, and it, so I took a step back, and I was like, uh, go ahead, Maurice. <laughs> but did you, ever, did you ever have to get in a fight with any of these guys? Um, I've gotten into a couple of group scuffles. <laughs> group scuffles? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where it just seems like everybody's kind of hitting everybody. <laughs> it's like in a Wild West movie. Yeah, it does feel like that. After a while, the guy pulling you off, you're not sure if that guy is on your team or the other. Like, you know. Did you ever have it where you would, uh, you know, you and another guy, back to back, you bump into each other, you turn around, you go to fight, you realize we're friends. Yeah, and then, and then we shake each other's hands and then kick the person across from us. <laughs> You're talking like, we're talking like rush hour style, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and my friend told me that he doesn't understand my words. <laughs> my black friend tells me that he doesn't understand my Asian words. The, the ones that are coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Anyways, I'm a, you know, but I'm a longtime cop and I'm just trying to help, you know, this little girl stay safe. That's right. Sag, PH.org. <laughs> Eugene. I'm going to look away from you Bye. and look right next to myself. This guy, what a, what a joy to have him back on the Don't show. cry. I can't help it Don't sometimes. you cry. I can't because you're going to you start. Cry. Don't cry. <laughs> Listen, full dental as well. I want to throw that out there. <laughs> I go every six months religiously. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Gall is back. It's great to be back. It's been a long time. It has been a long time. I'll get right to it. I was at a bar <laughs> on my 27th birthday 
And somebody... Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> it is today. Uh, somebody mistook me for somebody else and I and tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around and they plugged me straight in the nose. As hard as I've ever been hit in my life. I dropped. I went out cold. Woke up in the bottom of a pile. Now I had gotten... <laughs> I, I of like people. the bottom of a pile of people, not coats on like a bed. You was, weren't at a party. Like it was blocked for filming. Right. The man who hit me was an inch from my face, and both our arms were pinned down. <laughs> so we were just staring at each other. <laughs> Blood everywhere on my face. I see my. Now I had gone to this bar to party with six of my rugby team, and one of them bent down right next to us. And looked at him and goes, is this the motherfucker who hit you? And I go, yep. And right on my face, he just started going to the guy as what? blood from that guy. And I was like, no, 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 no. Bouncers move in, pull us all apart, throw us, like it, we're in a Western, throw us out the back door. And then a bouncer comes up to me and was like, Number one, you need to go to the hospital. Half your nose is hanging off. <gasps> and number two, <laughs> number two, hanging. sorry, that guy works here. He mistook you for somebody else. No. Oh my God. And I went to another bar. <laughs> no. no. No, we went to another bar. And I was like, that was crazy. Yeah, I was 27. It was your it was nose broken? Man. Yeah, I taped it up for the night. And then you taped it up for the what? night. And then the next morning they sewed it up. Yeah. Wait, so. It was the nostril was flapping. <gasps> but guys, Ev everyone <laughs> swiveled around in their chairs. It was a flat. If you everyone look closely, who could swivel? The doctor, swiveled. the doctor, literally was like, "Well, you split it on the seam. That's gonna, that's good for you. If you split it on the seam, you'd have split a big scar. Because it looks like a, it looks like a scar anyway. So, guys, guess what? I can't take a punch." <laughs> <laughs> Well, to be fair, you weren't ready. I was not ready. And I went out. I don't know how long I went out for. Not very long. But I was glad my arms were pinned. Somebody else could do what needed to be done to that man. I don't know what happened to him. I'm sure he didn't look good after my friend just peppered his face. <laughs> friend. Oh. oh my god. Anyway, yeah, I got kicked out of that one. <laughs> that seems unfair that you would get kicked out. Yeah, I thought the exact same thing. I'm sure I was complaining. Did I want to register a complaint. <laughs> so I'll never go back to American Spirit. <laughs> <Fuck it. Yeah. laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take another break. <laughs> oh my god. During the break, there's another ad that happens that you listen to. Please try... Guys, try not to get in a fight with anyone. <laughs> Woo! When we come back, we will reveal the location for our improv provided to us by our guest on RTs, and then we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. Are you tired of living in filth? Well, why don't you try cleaning up your house? There's plenty of ways to do it. You can get a broom, a mop, Swiffer, a rag, leaf blower, burn it down, collect the insurance money. Now you're rich. Buy a different house. Filth that up. You're weird. Goodbye. Oh, welcome back. Small world. Small world. <laughs> Some people are learning that maybe they crossed paths way back when. In the American spirit days. <laughs> American spirit or American spirits? Uh, with an S. At the, beginning, at the beginning and the end. Samaritan spirits. <laughs> Amer uh, Samaritan spirits. spirits. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, I, of both words. Yes, I said it wrong. Samaritans. Yes. Yeah. Spirits. Spirits. Spar. <laughs> and squeals. <laughs> Did I say... Who? And gills at the end? You or said squills? squills, I think. Squills. Yeah, yeah. That's you said, right. You said the squills to mm -hmm. pay the bills. <laughs> yeah. Bar and squills. Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. We have our location from Ano Ortiz. We're ready to begin our improv. But first, just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, 
we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say we need to go into the past for some reason. Someone is having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. We use this flashback sound effect. Let's say we want to return from a flashback back to where we were or travel into the mysterious future. We use this flash forward sound effect. Now, this final sound moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene we want to find out what's happening at the exact same moment somewhere else. We use this meanwhile sound effect. We have just moved in space, not in time. Past, present, future. Everyone gets it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to reveal the location for our proper body to us by Gets on Ortiz, and that location is South Street, Philadelphia. South Street, Philadelphia. We take you now to South Street, Philadelphia. Excuse me. Yeah? Oh, sorry to bother you. Hi. Um, my son and I. Uh huh. Is it, can I ask, is this. Are we on North Street? Yeah, are we on North Street? I, I, I said I'd speak to him. I'm sorry, Dad. No, you're on South Street. Can you get off my corner, please? I'm trying to work. <laughs> Was your name on the corner? Hey. Is it written on the corner? Do you like own it? Did you I pay said for I'd it? speak to him. Yo, are these two bothering you? Yeah. Um, they want to know if this is North Street or South Street, and this is obviously South Street, which is also my corner. It's obviously South Street. And we're trying to work. We're trying to work. Hey, look, my toe's on your corner. I put my toe in your corner. Now it's partially my corner. Dennis, yeah, 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 yeah. Dennis, I said I would speak to him. Sorry, Dad. What are you doing? He's we're, trying to start trouble? No, we were looking for North Street. Can we, I? We have a therapy session. Newsflash. There ain't no North Street in Philly. There ain't no East Street, no West Street. There's only South Street. That's a very limited view. Hey, Dennis. I'm sorry. Do you have like banana peel mouth today? What's going on? Yeah, I do actually. I feel like I have a lot I, of banana peel in my mouth today. That, well, that, I know the term. That's why they call it that way. But you seem to be spilling out verbiage. Nancy would say that you're purposely antagonizing me right now, okay, Dad. Nancy. Yeah, the same one that told us there was a North Street in Philadelphia. Hey, Teddy. Just right now, I feel a little screwed over by Nancy. Uh, I saw that uh, 11K just left her apartment. I'm going to go up there and uh, take a shower and stuff. Good call, Duke. Okay. I guess we're done with asking. <clears throat> hey, listen. Okay. Hold on a second, family. Rude family. While you're up there? Yeah. Could you microwave me a Hot Pocket? Yeah. One of ours or one of theirs? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> ours. No. Oh. Theirs. Theirs. Oh. They do turkey and broccoli. Yeah, I'm trying to stay healthy. <laughs> oh, you want a lean pocket? Yeah, please. Okay. We have hot pockets. We have we have beef and cheddar. No, I know. Okay. Look, okay. Of course, beef and cheddar is my favorite. Okay. Maybe. But I'm trying to watch my, you know, my diet. Hey, and if we're going to make any money on this quarter... You got to watch it. That's right. Look, my my body is my fortune. Your body is your wanderland. <laughs> is there a north People west? wander in it. Huh? North Hold west. on a second, Stop dude. it. We're still talking, you rude family with your son. I'm trying God. to talk to my colleague here. Yeah, we're colleagues. We we're... will get out of your way as soon as we know. Dad, we're... Dad, I'm hungry. Now I'm really hungry. <sighs> Excuse me. Dennis, is it? Yeah. Yeah? Um, Have you thought about going somewhere else? To eat some food and leaving us alone. Do you nice. always stand right in somebody's face when you talk to them like that? That's my yeah, son. You, you have really weird breath. Like, it's I can't totally place it's it. It's pirate's booty. <laughs> I got pirate's booty from a different... You're right. That's exactly... It's pirate's booty. That's First amazing. of all, my colleague Duke does not owe you an explanation about my breath. Secondly, yes, it is pirate's booty. Is it pirate's booty? I'm or... trying to eat healthier. I used to eat Fritos. Yeah. It's not the generic Trader Joe's. No, 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 no. no. Straight up. We got it from it's 2F. It's not Captain Joe's. 2F. All, all 2F. Very gold. All this food talk is making me so hungry, Here, just Dad. Eat a I'm gut. so hungry. Here, take a banana. Okay. All right, more so more banana. Turkey broccoli. Turkey broccoli. Okay. Hey, do you want that um, 
that other sock from up there? Do you know what surprised me? Okay. Because I think it might be fun to wear like mismatched socks. Got it. And maybe it's like eye-catching for potential customers. You know cool. what I mean? Uh-huh. And you want that Foo Fighter CD still? Yeah, I do. Got it. Do. What do you mean by... <sighs> well, the reason it took us so long to get to you, Nancy, is because you told us to go to North Street, and we couldn't find it. Oh. Is, it, is there not a North Street? You live in this town... You've told us that you've practiced for over a hundred years, and I assume that was you were exaggerating. Well, I'm only slightly exaggerating. I've been practicing law for roughly eighty years. Like a like a vampire, like well, a vampire. Dennis, what? there's no vampire lawyers, Dennis. I don't darling. know. Not that I know of. See. Now, Ridley. Um, I have to tell you something. I think the reason I told you North Street is that uh, I do a lot of blackouts. <laughs> when I drink, is that like a drug? Uh, no, it's it's something I do. Oh, okay. you I, do them on purpose. Well, I didn't start doing them on purpose, but when I realized what was happening, then I did. Do you like hit yourself in the head? No, I drink Crystal Light. There's something about oh. when I drink Crystal Light. Crystal Light. I go into a fugue state. The non-alcoholic powdered yeah. drink? It's like an upscale tang, yes. You think it's upscale tang? <laughs> you don't think the crystal light is more elegant than tang? <laughs> Touche. Man, now I'm really thirsty. All this Dennis, would you like talk. some crystal light? It's yeah. for grown-ups, I don't but you might enjoy it. about this. Can I? But, well, well, We've not, you're too young. What is... Th- this is our problem, isn't it? This is why I want to divorce you. This is why we're at the lawyer. It's because I'm trying to divorce my dad, right? No, it's called excommunication, and I will not allow it's, it. It's all, It's called emancipation. <laughs> excommunication is for the church, Ridley. I dear. am her church. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a big issue for me. It's a big issue for you. Yeah. You don't know what's a big issue not, for you. You're a tiny child. I'm not that tiny. You're, you weigh under... Uh, 150 pounds. So? So what? <laughs> you, so? you looked at me for confirmation of that, but I have no way of knowing how much Dennis weighs. I don't just give out that information for free. You have to pay for that information. Dennis, dear, I, how, how old are you now? Twelve and a half. And oh. you and you want to be legally emancipated or excommunicated, as Ridley says, from your dad? I want to be divorced. But okay, we've that's definitely not the term. Well... We've we've thrown a few terms around. That one is for sure wrong. I can take care of myself. Just like those boys today, I can do that. I can be on my own. No. I can own a corner. It's not that easy. You saw those boys. They were so great. Great? Yeah. <laughs> they were sneaking into into apartments well, sure, they for had, hot pockets. They had bad breath, but... Dennis, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I kind of remember you. Duke, right? Duke. Yeah, yeah, that's I, me, Duke. I, I remember you. I wrote about you in my journal for for three whole nights. Is it because of my purple hair? Yeah. <laughs> and Did you write about my purple hair? Yeah, and your blue eye and your brown eye. I got one blue eye, one brown eye. So I kind of look like one of them weird dogs, but with purple hair. Also, I'm growing out this goatee. You got, you don't see any hair yet, but it's coming. Any hoots? Um... You say you want to be one of us, huh? Yeah, I think I'd be really good at whatever you do. I heard that you have customers. I'm, uh, you know, I, I think of a client first, customer first. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, we're 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 customer first type workers. Hey, babe. What? You hear someone in the living room? What do you mean? I just thought I heard somebody in the living room. What do you mean you heard someone like talking? So this is one of the places that we go to. I don't know. Do really really nice place. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like talking. It's not our place, but um you can use this living room whenever you feel like you need to. It started um, earlier, I heard like clipping. I really There's like um that, cli- uh, yeah, yeah. clipping like that a lazy horse? boy? Yeah, that lazy boy. You can take a like a nap in there. You can take a nap with a lazy boy. Not like a horse, like uh like somebody was uh clipping. Oh, so no clopping then. No, I would have said clipping. there was cl- being, um, Jesus Christ, babe. They have all, don't yell at me, okay? In no, their bathroom, they have yeah. all of day. the things you need to, oh, uh, you so know, take care of your body. Did you give yeah. somebody a perm? I, what? 
As a matter of fact, I gave two perms today. I'm gonna floss my teeth. Yeah, you can floss your teeth in here. You can use one their... person already had curly hair. They you said can they use wanted their, um, ultra Dr. curly. Dr. Browner. I know when you give perms, you smell like. Um, perm. you come be home careful though. They have used to they have you peppermint, like but they also have system. the one that's stinging. I swear oh, right. to God, I can hear somebody. Menthol. In the they have menthol. <laughs> menthol. Anyway, so that's one of the other places. Okay. So like I was saying, you have to keep it down a little bit when you're in the house. Got it. <laughs> but not too but I really like how you can like just go wherever and just yeah. feel at home. Well that's what I'm saying. This credit card is more than a credit card, which is not our credit card, but is a credit card. Yeah. But it's also a knock card. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Why are you being so loud? Oh, they're like home. Okay. They're in the bedroom. So they're in a different room? Yeah. A touche. So they can't it's, see us. It's not that big a place. Like, they can hear us. But they can't see us. Um, hi. Do you have room? Do you have uh, time to give a perm? A permanent? Uh. Sorry, I'm, it said walk-ins. Welcome. You want a perm? No, I'm asking because I don't. <laughs> okay, you're Sorry being, about that. You're being sarcastic, but your hair is extremely curly already. So I don't get... You, you understand my confusion. No, I don't, because a curl can always get tighter. It literally says that on your door. <laughs> well, you fucking got me. <laughs> you just gotta keep it down. All right. Um, don't, dude, don't get mad at okay, me. Okay, you're right, you're right. I'm just, I'm just helping the new guy learn some of the ropes around yeah, here. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah, hey, Dennis, can, yeah. You, can you excuse us for just a second? Okay, I'll turn my back. Thank you. Hey, Duke. Teddy, I mean, Teddy. This kid, he's like a child. Yeah, he's like close what? to 13 years old. Yeah, what are you, Fagin or something? <laughs> if this is a, this is not a great idea. What does that mean? <laughs> you never read Oliver Twist? What did you say? Fagin. Yeah, like the Greek yogurt? No, that's phage. Zero hmm. percent or two percent? Uh, with a little bit of, with a little bit of, you know. Uh, key lime, Duke. Huh? Don't don't sidetrack me with I'm yogurt. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not listening, but this five, talk is really making me hungry, you guys. Five C. <laughs> this kid. This kid loves to eat. He loves to. Eat. I mean, I'll tell you right now that yeah, he's 13 years old, but he looks like he's 18 years old. Thank you. I feel like morally. Okay, Dennis. Take, Sorry. Take a breather. Okay. I'm gonna go in yeah, the do corner. a lap. I'm gonna put my name. How about my you do a lap? Do a lap. Do a lap around the around <laughs> living room. Okay. Here but, we go. But take your shoes off so they don't hear you in the bedroom. Okay. No problem. Babe? What? <laughs> little boy just run through the room? <laughs> what? Jesus Christ, you didn't see that? I thought a little boy just ran through the room. I I think I blacked out. <laughs> I think it's the perm fumes got to me. I don't know. I just feel like morally this feels like crossing a line for Okay, us. fine, fine. What do you want him to be? Like our apprentice or something? There she goes again. <laughs> Now it's a little girl. Oh, wait. What? Did you say that? No, he just yelled something back. You didn't just I think laugh. She, you I didn't just you didn't just laugh hee hee. <laughs> no, no. I did. What's I, so I thought funny? it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Hey guys. Hey. Um there's two adults in the other room. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we know. That's why I'm asking everybody to be quiet. Yeah, it's their house. Oh, Listen, okay. Dennis. We think you show a lot of promise. I love you too. But, ooh. You're my new family. That's, you're kind of making a jump here, kid. Okay, I'll go, I'll go jump while nope. you guys talk. Hold on a second. No, no. Here's what you got to understand. Okay. This kind of life that we lead, it's tough, right? Yeah, I don't know if we mentioned this, but we fuck. For money. Yeah. We're prostitutes. I'm sorry, we never said that out loud. What we actually do when I said yeah. his body was a wanderland is because people wander around yeah. his body uh, for money and like different places that you find on his body cost different yeah. amounts okay. of money. And with that money, we do hardcore drugs yeah. that we're addicted to. But not with that money do we spend it on groceries or anything because that's what we use these houses exactly. for. Exactly. You see? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, so, oh, oh, we can't answer it. It's not our house. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody behind a curtain. <laughs> Babe, you get that? What? Someone's at the door. Oh. He. Uh, he. Oh. He. Are you laughing? What are you laughing at? That's not me. Somebody else is laughing. Do you think it's the person at the door? I don't know. Just go get the goddamn door, babe. Babe. Uh, 
All right. Make sure that- Are your legs broken? <laughs> Hilarious. That actually was a good <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Jeff. I've been working on my roasts. All right, let me just. Um, I feel like we should answer it. Stay, um, no, no. Stay behind the curtain. Okay. And stop laughing. I'm sorry. I can't help it. Your boisterous laugh is going to get us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, to tell you the truth, I don't know if I can stand behind these curtains for much longer either. What? I just, as soon as I'm behind any curtains, I want to circus a lay <laughs> you know what I mean? I just want to dance with them. I because of your time in the circus? Yeah, Soleil. My dad took me to the Cirque du Soleil. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is that how it's pronounced? I was just part of it. <laughs> I don't even know how it's Fine, pronounced. I'll get it, babe. I'll get it. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. <clears throat> Stop it, Jack. Shh. Oh, is there something behind the curtain? What are you talking about? Who's at the door? See, he's at the door. Who's at the door? Oh, I'm sorry. I just got distracted because somebody... Hold on a second! Answer it! Somebody's dancing behind the curtain. My stomach's growling, you guys. Shh. Shut, up. Shut up. I can't help him so hungry. Shut up! <clears throat> I gotta get that door fixed. Hey, what's up, man? Hi. Uh, Hi. I take it from the uniform, you're, you, uh. Yeah, I'm the police. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's why well, you guys there, wear a uniform, yeah. so I can tell right away. And, Was there a problem in here? Are you guys okay? Is there a problem in here? Are you guys okay? Babe, it's the cops. Shh, shh. How big are they? The cops? Yeah. Uh, I'm like I'm like six four, two two hey, four. Hey, listen, he buddy. Sounds, he sounds small. I know he sounds small, but he's actually a monster. I mean, he's big. He's a beast. Six four. Hit him with a rock. What? <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do it? Oh yeah. my God! Look at him. It's like all laid out there. He is a big guy. Yeah. Cops make me nervous. I just follow what you said, and now, here, pull him in with me. Okay. Did you hear that? Oh my God, you guys! That guy's nose is flapping all over. Oh the place. See, he's just laying there, and it's flapping in the breeze it's like disgusting. a U.S. flag. He just, he just, he just beat up a cop. He threw a rock at a cop. He has rocks in his house to protect himself. He, I thought, I thought that was like a sculpture, but it's just a bucket of rocks. Yes. What is he gonna do to us when he finds us? What are we gonna do? We gotta do something here. Do we, do we just wait this out, or do we try to make friends with this dude? Hey babe, help me put him behind the curtain. <laughs> All right. <laughs> here, drag him over here. Okay, he's just unconscious, right? He's not dead. I don't know what he is. Popped him with my rock. Guys, if we don't move, maybe he won't see us. No, I, I think. Just don't move. Okay. Just don't. It, it I, sounded like they're gonna put. Yeah, this unconscious yeah. cop behind the curtain, which yeah. is where we are. I know, but maybe if we don't move, they won't just see pull this no, no, curtain no. back. Oh! Oh! Shove him back there oh. here oh. and close the curtain. <laughs> wow. See, guys, I'm good. I'm good for the group. Huh. Maybe I you're right, ideas. Dennis. I also don't know if they can hear. <laughs> Do you think maybe they're hearing impaired? Oh, wait a minute. Also, because we just screamed. We did scream when the, when the curtain opened, and we heard him just. And now there's. A, I think, uh, hopefully a lot. I'm not going to check his paws, this humongous policeman. No. Okay. I would not touch that cop. With the flappy nose? Here's what I don't get about this guy. <laughs> Which guy? The flappy nose? No, cop? no, no. Because I, I seemed, get his old thing. He seemed like he was just kind of sad and scared to have that right, job. He, right, He knew he was a brute, but, and so then he got pushed into that job, but that wasn't the job he wanted. Probably he probably people, wanted to be a penis. Yeah, probably people judged him all yes. his life because mm-hmm. of his height. Mm-hmm. He didn't get to get into that whole story because the guy hit the road. Babe? What? I mean, there's definitely someone talking <laughs> in the living room, right? I'm not crazy. I've been sitting here, and well, it's I almost mean, like their volume has gone off the charts. Do you see anyone? Oh, I mean, Look for someone moving around. Well, one of them is doing sort of a ballet, sort of a some sort of dance. Right there. See it? 
Yeah, that's the move I saw you do in Cirque du Soleil. Oh, thank you. Um, not a great idea to um, Got it. stroll down yes. Circus Memory Lane right now. I'm sorry. I mean, is it ever a bad time? <laughs> I, we got to stay perfectly still. We're going to see us. Okay. 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 Babe. What? I think we should, honestly, every part of my body, every instinct I have tells me there's someone here. <laughs> But I'm also ready to go to bed. Maybe like give each other hand jobs and just fall asleep. I mean, let's oh. that sounds like heaven right now. <laughs> <laughs> so this happened at your house last night. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, last night. I mean, we have had feelings for a little while that uh, somebody is in your house. Yeah. Uh huh. But what about your relationship with each other? Are you okay? Uh, oh, I mean, you know, it has its ups and downs. Okay. We haven't spent a ton of time together. But like, you're not planning on separating or anything anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess that's what we're trying to figure out. Well, right? and I'm here. You know, I'm here as your lawyer. Um, I am also a vampire, and people yeah. don't believe that I can do both. But I can do both. It sounds well, be- like you, since you brought that up, it sounds like you're insecure about it. Well, I am. I am. Because I hear there's other uh, lawyers out there that are saying, oh, he can, there's no such thing as uh, vampire lawyers. How can you do court during the day? How can you do court during the day? <laughs> like you have to do court during the day. How do you do it? It's inside. I oh, follow. Okay. I yeah. get there the night before. <laughs> And I stay inside the concrete building. (laughs) (laughs) He's always, he laughs at weird moments. Okay. Anyways. Yeah. So the last time we saw you, we were thinking about getting excommunicated from each other. Yes. That's the proper term. Yes. Right. And then, I don't Mm -hmm. know, we shared that experience in our apartment last night where Mm -hmm. somebody may or may not have been there. It was almost like we kind of got off on the idea that people were in there without Mm. us knowing. And I was like, oh, maybe we need more excitement. Do you know what was a big part of it? When you broke that cop's nose with a rock. (laughs) (laughs) That got me going. Okay, I cannot hear this part. No, Uh, no, no, no. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, You are sitting in my seat. My napkin is over my mug of coffee. And... uh, Oh, do you guys not have your own chairs here? <laughs> no, this, this, this is clearly my office. But if you call dibs at any well, desk, I, I called dibs this yeah. morning when yeah. I came in, and so when I we begin the day know. at this law firm, right. when you begin the day, right. everybody's desk is a communal desk until you put your coffee there. So I have a there's a cup of coffee in front of mine with a napkin over it. Oh, so. we gotta hurry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry, Dad. I didn't I didn't mean to just run off on you. It's okay. I'm just I guess I was just looking for a chance to rebuild our relationship and the timing was a little <laughs> The timing was a little off. Nancy, I, I don't want to divorce my dad anymore. I changed my mind. Well, that's good news, Dennis. I'm glad to hear that. I was a prostitute for like an hour, and oh it was boy. just. We've all I'm been less happy to hear that. <laughs> no. Honestly, that's crazy. not great. I'll be, I'll be very that frank. That doesn't mean you got any business. You were just in the. You were a prostitute. But I'm hoping, and I pray. They didn't even give me any food. Wait, but I want to get back to this. <laughs> you didn't actually, as a twelve and a half year old. Yes, it would be hard for me to move on. It and wouldn't be fun. Said, it wouldn't be fun to hear about. They said we're prostitutes, and so right. we just stood around and looked at each but other. Never, so I was but, a prostitute. And for just like going an hour. back to what I'm saying. <laughs> yes, I want to so make we're, sure. Just so we're clear, dear. I just want to make sure that nobody paid you money and actually was inside or out or around any part of you. Because you're twelve and a half. And I just w- ran around the room in circles. <laughs> okay, that's a relief. Unless that's a euphemism. <laughs> Hey, Is it? What are you asking me? Did you fuck anybody? <laughs> oh. Not yet. Uh, oh, acceptable. That's okay. acceptable. Not yet. Unpleasant. Maybe you're gonna be a prostitute again. Im- or- unpleasant? Oh, implies. No, Dad. Never. Sorry. I promise. I, I have a little banana. I now. will. <laughs> banana peel mouth. Banana peel mouth. Duke. Do you ever think about Dennis? What are you doing? Huh? I find some more. Huh? Are you I, a hot pocket? I mean, he chicharrones. 
Where'd you get chicharrones? I saw it in, in a 11C. It's a new, uh, new family that moved in there. I think they go to the international market. Duke, how do you always surprise me? I don't. These people do. <laughs> and it all happened in a place called Spontaneous Nation. <laughs> Eugene Cordero, where can people find you? What do you want to promote? It is October 23rd. Ooh, you can find me at Huge Cordero, E-U-G Cordero, on Twitter, Instagram, the whole nine. Um, and uh, The Dumbbells is a podcast. Uh, that's that's right. about uh, That's me and my buddy Ryan Stanger just joking around about fitness. <laughs> That's not, not trying to hurt anybody. No. You're just joking around about fitness. Yeah. Anything can be fun to talk about. Let's do it. <laughs> Carla Kakaski. Hi. Tell me the things. Yes. Uh, a, a podcast called Craigslist. Mm-hmm. Very good. Um, where my husband makes me watch his favorite movies. Full disclosure, Craig Kakowski is her husband. Yep. And uh, at Carla Kakowski on Twitter. There you go. Thanks, Paul. Instagram? No. You don't want to plug it? Sure. Carla Kikowski <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah. Raggle! Hey! Uh, check out <laughs> Bajillion Dollar Properties Season 3 yes. with Paul F. Tompkins mm-hmm. and Eugene, actually. It's on iTunes. Yeah. I believe the first three seasons are on iTunes. Yeah. And hopefully soon. Season 4, we have no. As of this recording, we do not know if we've found a, a home for no. Season 4, if people can see it. I hope that if we don't get picked up by a network, that people can see it on iTunes I as really well. I really hope that too. Um, but we're. Uh, what I complete and utter joy it was to work on that show with you guys and all yeah. the wonderful people that we had so on fun. it. Um, so yeah, um, hopefully if uh, I, I will I will insert something uh, on the day if we have found a home or wherever people can find season four. Nice. Um, no, to future Paul. Uh, Evan Schletter, he's Evan Schletter on all the things. Go to EvanSchletter.com to find out about Evan Schletter's various projects. How do you look up Evan Schletter? Why well, you put his name into the browser and how do you spell that? It's simple, it goes like this. <laughs> E-B-A-N-S-C-H-L-E-T-T-E-R. As for me, PaulFTompkins.com slash live uh, is where all my live dates live. Um, I am P.F. Tompkins on Twitter, on Instagram. Follow me. Do what thou wilt. Shall be the whole of the law. Um, follow Spontaneous Nation on Twitter. Uh, we also have a Facebook group. We have a Facebook page every Tuesday. I try to remember to do it on Tuesdays. I will post the question from that week's episode. It is very fun to watch everyone's, uh, to read everyone's responses to those questions. We post pictures from the episodes, all that stuff. Uh, check us out on Facebook. Leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the podcast. And we're going to start reading people's reviews from iTunes. Once I remember that I've told people I'm going to start doing that. So, stay tuned. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Sam for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying Semper in Presenti. Hello, everybody. My name is Jensen Karp, and I am the host of a show called Get Up On This right here on the Earwolf Network. We've been doing it for over 300 episodes, so we're celebrating by sitting down with a hip-hop legend, my favorite MC, Wu-Tang Clan founding member, Method Man. That's right. For over an hour, we talk about his music career, songs he's released. We talk about his television uh, appearances from The Wire to the brand new show, The Deuce, and also the debut of Drop the Mic, which is a show that I created and co-executive produced on TBS. It debuts October 20th. 24th at 10 30 it's where celebrities rap battle against each other and i swear to you it's better than that sounds i promise you that but listen you could download our episode now at apple Podcasts or on the earwolf network and listen to an engaging conversation sort of candid a lot of stuff comes out with literally one of the best rappers in the game still method man uh we hope you listen and uh yeah whatever have a good time Production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, Colin Anderson, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com.